Hey everybody, you should be able to see me, Gatsby, the community manager, and Phil Merrick's with us today, who is taking on the guise of Phil. You all know and love Phil, he's been with us for a little while now. Um, he's obviously our new producer, and he uh, has taken flight and joined us in his final form to kind of discuss a couple things about the squad today. <laughs> Um, My so, current form. <laughs> yeah, your current form. It's true. You are not in your final form. We've still got a couple power levels to grant you before we get there. Yeah, um, so, yeah so today Phil, Phil is with us to kind of talk about what being a producer on Squad is, where he came from, and, and how we got to this point, as well as just kind of the squad in general, the future, and we'll, we'll take plenty of questions, and we'll probably uh, get into a little bit here and there about uh, some of the features in Alpha 13 that you guys are excited about. Um, if you've been playing Alpha 13, I want to encourage you to uh, go in-game and click on the uh, feedback survey. Uh, this is the second one we've done. We did one during the first uh, kind of testing period, and we're getting a lot of great feedback. We're asking you a few couple questions about some of the features in A13, and we really want to hear what players have to say, because that's, that's going to be very important. Uh, yeah, you're probably going to have the Discord beeps there, Stomopolis, sorry. Uh, so yeah, that, that kind of brings us here today. Uh, Phil, can you kind of tell us who you are and uh, what brought you here today? Yes, I can. Hello, I am Phil. I am from England, but I live in Vancouver. Uh, I've been here for about five years. Uh, I joined Offworld in March as producer, and I am kind of here to help everyone get stuff done and make sure everyone's able to get stuff done without being blocked by anything, uh, finding challenges before they challenge us and uh, resolving them uh, in the best way that we can so that uh, you, the players, get our very best stuff. Does that uh, answer your question? <laughs> yeah, I think so. I, I like as uh, Laurie put it, Laurie seven by uh, three put it. Uh, joined in March as producer, evolved the UAV in April. Yes, exactly. <laughs> that you is uh, that is the rapid development iteration that we expect from our, our leadership and management teams here at OWI. It's it's all about fast and getting it out there. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, to put it into context of my current form, you know, I I was uh, in recon mode over Vancouver and uh, decided to. Uh, park myself in a sort of recon mode, spying on the uh, off-world HQ. And uh, now I'm looking for um, lucrative targets to uh, uh, take out or something like that. Um, so yeah, kind of speaking of reconnaissance, like, we, you know, we've just gotten to know you and we absolutely love you. It's been a, it's been kind of like a, you've, you've come in as breathe a fresh breath of fresh air and really kind of gotten us going back on track. And we're kind of changing some of our internal procedures. But uh, just before we get into that, I kind of want to talk about like your experience in the industry and how you even got to Canada, as I understand that you might not have always been there. No, that's right. I have. Uh, so I started in the industry at the, um, at the grand age of 18. Uh, I was a modder myself, uh, making maps mainly for Quake back in the late 90s. And uh, I was making uh, a mod uh, level, really, for uh, myself and my best friend at the time to play. Uh, my friend had some uh, physical disabilities and uh, had difficulty with uh, vertical aiming. Uh, so anything that involved kind of moving the mouse up and down. Uh, so I built a map that would uh, provide, you know, uh, a satisfying challenge to both of us, but not rely too heavily on that. Um, and I put that map up on my uh, GeoCities page, which you can probably find on archive.org if you look hard enough. And uh, as it turned out, in the small town that I'm originally from in the northwest of England, uh, there was uh, a game studio and they were working on uh, the PlayStation version of Quake 2. Uh, and they wanted to hire level designers. And they were interested in me because at the time, the original PlayStation, the PS1, uh, the controller didn't have any analog sticks on it or anything like that. So uh, vertical aiming was quite difficult. Uh, so yeah, that's why they were interested in me. So. I joined as level designer, uh, worked on Quake 2, uh, which was an amazing first game to work on. And then uh, as I was working there, there was uh, an opportunity for me to uh, take more of a, a production role. Uh, that we didn't really have producers or anything like that there. And uh, our relationship with Activision was uh, a little random. Uh, we did try to uh, formalize it by me answering the phone instead of nobody answering it at the beginning. Uh, and eventually they would call and ask to speak to me uh, and I would tell them what's going on in the game. And then as the game got more closer to uh, release, we uh, 
that kind of became my focus. I spent a lot less time building maps and a lot more time uh, talking to Activision's QA team and publishing team uh, and making sure that we did the, uh, again, did the best by the players and uh, make a game that we could be proud of and that people would enjoy playing. And uh, that's what happened. And it was really good. Uh, from there, I moved around uh, a few studios in the UK uh, doing lots of different types of game, but actually quite a few more uh, military shooters. Uh, I wrote some down here uh, so I could remember them. <laughs> uh, so Soldier of Fortune, uh, the A game good that was famed. Game too, yeah, yeah uh, it was famed for its uh, dismemberment. Uh, did that on the Dreamcast. Uh, Serious Sam, which uh, you know I still am very fond of today. I, I made a version of that for uh, the the Nintendo Game Boy Advance. Uh, Delta Force Black Hawk Down, uh, which was uh, pretty uh, a game that I'm very very proud of, actually. Uh, so you we should be. It was a good game. It was neat. Uh, we started off just doing a straight port from the PC version to uh, the original Xbox. What should we call that now? It's not the Xbox One. <laughs> I think it's the X Xbox Large or Xbox Old. I don't know. There's it went Xbox Old. <laughs> yeah. So what was really cool about that game was we started off just doing it as a a straight port and uh as we got on with it um we we figured that there was quite a lot of opportunity to make it a really valuable uh first person shooter experience on xbox so you know a lot of the stuff on xbox at the time was more uh halo-y <laughs> shall we say uh so it, it was it, it was different enough that we thought we could uh really augment it by adding in some of the cool, unique stuff that Microsoft had just added to the platform. Xbox Live was uh, in its infancy, really, but there was a lot of cool new tech being brought to it at the time. So we worked closely with Microsoft, and it was uh, actually one of the, I think it was the first game on the original Xbox to have 64-player uh, multiplayer uh, on Xbox Live. Uh, and yeah, we were uh, exceptionally proud of that. It was. Uh, quite the achievement and it was really hard fought to get there uh i had a wall of xboxes next to my desk so that we could actually test with 64 players at once uh and uploading builds to that was uh, uh a lot more difficult than it is now so yeah but it was a lot of fun and the game that came out i think uh, everyone was very happy with it so so yeah black hook down what a, a real highlight for me um more recently uh when I moved to Vancouver, uh, I worked at a studio called Demonware, who do all of uh, Activision's online services. Uh, so that gave me the opportunity to uh, work on the Call of Duty franchise and Destiny and things like that. Um, and they, those were really exciting. I, I learned a lot about um, what to do and what not to do on uh, big multiplayer games with lots and lots of people playing them uh, through that experience. and. Uh, yeah, I, I, it was very valuable. Um, yeah, I mean, it uh, it seems almost as if you are uniquely qualified to bring a uh, a, a military shooter that is looking for large scale player counts to a uh, to fruition. It, it seems like there might be some experience in networking there. Too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, I think um, there, like my own experience uh, playing games online, I always feel uh, more immersive uh, into a game when. There's a lot of us all trying to work together on something. And the, the unique challenge that that poses is trying to get everyone uh, doing their best stuff and uh, making sure that everyone's helping each other out uh, has always been something that I've, I've strived to uh, have as part of a, a game experience, especially online. So getting that into Squad, uh, well, joining Squad and seeing that that's already a part of it was, was so exciting. Uh, and really just completely uh, in my wheelhouse ballpark, whatever you want to say there. <laughs> yeah, no, that is kind of one of the interesting things about Squad is a lot of the uh, the functionality crossover between like how the teams work and how like best to work in a squad in game is, is strongly there. Like the communication aspect is always going to be something that, that leads over and like, you know, th these things work for a reason. So we kind of kind of have a little bit of a nod to that uh, in our culture as well as the game. So it's it's always kind of a, an interesting yeah, that's that's part of like what what we really look for in a new person is just like they they're into that sort of communication and, and thoroughness and teamwork where it's it's uh, 
Definitely core. Um, you know, kind of with that in mind, like, you know, having been international, how would you say, like, what you've learned internationally comes a little bit different when you're coming to squad? Is there, you know, things that uh, come over or things we do a little bit in idiosyncratically? Um, so I, th I was thinking about um, this a lot recently. Uh, one thing that I, w I was always proud of, especially when I was working on uh, Black Hawk Down, was the, uh, the multiculturalism of the team that I was on. There was a, a lot of different experiences and a lot of different viewpoints and feedbacks and politi political views and so on. Uh, but we could all agree that it was, you know, fun making games and, and playing the games and being proud of what we were playing. I think here uh, Offworld, there's a very similar vibe. And that, that's another thing that really uh, sort of uh, made me happy to be here uh, at the beginning and still does. That There is uh, a multicultural uh, attitude, uh, lots of people from different uh, uh, places uh, and Nordic. <laughs> so yeah, it's uh, I think where I've worked at studios that don't have that, there's there's a different kind of uh, focus and a different kind of uh, expectation of, of what they're going to accomplish. That there's less kind of curiosity and well, what if we do this? There's, there's a lot more kind of let's just do this, and and I don't necessarily think that that's often the best approach. But it, you know, it depends on the game. Uh, I, I did some time at EA, and that was definitely the way it worked there, despite them being very very large and having lots of uh, global influence. Um, when you're working to a very very strict timeline to uh, release a, an annualized franchise, that the it has it poses its own very unique uh, challenges that. Uh, on what we have here, but um, that th I learned a lot there as well about uh, how to get stuff out the door quickly, uh, but still do a good job on it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, to kind of supplement that, like one of the things that I really love about our team being so international is like, I don't know that I've ever had a question that couldn't be answered by somebody on the team in some regard. And like, it really sort of ups the realism. Like uh, NARB is a really good example where We've had team members go like, oh, I live in the area. That's actually a gas station that exists there. Or like, you know, like there's all these things that are just, uh, you know, like because we have such a diverse team, we can kind of pick up on international interests and stuff like that that are like that really do sort of bring out some of the life in the squad maps. And I think that's something that people can really see, you know, over the course of development, you know, going back to Operation First Light to some of the people that have, you know, seen the uh, shots of Fallujah, people that are on Mestia, people on Narva, you really start to see more of those real life interactions come in and it's sort of the you know again it's it's you're you're really using a human element in squad that doesn't necessarily exist in other games where even down to the core communication uh, like people talking and discussing really kind of bring the battlefield to life for sure for sure it's it's um i think it's easy to to discount that that kind of um feel and look and fidelity will just come to into a game from professional game developers I don't necessarily think that's always the case. Uh, and I, it's hard to really put a finger on what that looks like on any single game, but you know it when it's there. And those are the games that I gravitate towards. And those are the games that I try to make by putting my heart into uh, getting the best out of them and believing in their success and being proud of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it shows in your work. I mean, uh, you know, like you've, you've only been with us for a little bit, but it definitely kind of oozes uh, out of meetings and stuff, which I only mentioned just to let people know that like there really is a strong feeling of love for the game and uh, we really are dedicated to it. Like there's not a person on the team that doesn't enjoy working with squad. So like that is definitely a thing that, that is, is strong within the, our community. And to kind of jump into that a little bit more, um, we've had questions about like what processes or procedures or things we do to help make game development a little bit easier and kind of coming into OWI you've been sort of a resource in, in analyzing our procedures and, and processes and trying to make them better um can you kind of give us some of the things that like you really really hit on as tools to succeed especially kind of coming into a new uh, new environment yeah I mean uh when you do uh production stuff in games it's uh, like it, for anyone who's uh, watching who it works in software development or in any other uh, kind of role where there is a lot of um, structure around uh, getting things done, there's lots of different ways to do um, this kind of work. Uh, and I don't think there's any one correct way. And I think each uh, company that uh, make software has their own unique challenges uh, and 
because o OWI has uh, a, a specific uh, focus that is a little bit different and makes them makes us so uh, uh, interesting to watch. Uh, our, our challenges uh, have been, uh, you know, new to me, so it's, it took me a little while at the beginning to find what what was causing uh, us friction and uh, put into place uh, things that would uh, help us get through them. The, the main one being, um, like the, there is a, uh, a development methodology called Agile, which uh, anyone who has worked in it will either go, yeah, or they will shudder in, in pain. Uh, there's, there's right and wrong ways that people will tell you to do Agile development. And uh, I don't think um, it's the same for any single team. Uh, so my approach with Agile is to uh, take the parts that are going to address any uh, friction that exists on the team and uh, slowly implement those parts of it uh, and watch how things improve or, or don't improve. You know, th there's never uh, a sure um, chance that it's, that it's what you do is going to work. So you've always got to have a kind of backup plan for it's not doing what we hoped it would so let's let's stop doing that and let's try and do something else a, a particularly interesting part of that that we just did just after a13 came out was a uh, a retrospective which i don't believe had been done at uh, owi before and uh, so a retrospective is, is is what it sounds we talked about everything that we'd done over a13 as, as a team as a big group together and gave feedback on what we thought went well what we thought didn't go well what we thought we could start doing to uh, improve how we work. Uh, and those are conversations that you can have regardless of whether things are generally going well or if they're not going well. There's, there's always opportunities for improvement uh, and having those conversations helps you uh, become better at uh, making cool stuff. So uh, that, that uh, retrospective, the first one that we just had, I think uh, we learned a lot from that. And it was great to just have the whole team talking together uh, for, a, for a couple of hours uh, because we are a little bit decentralized. You know, there's a bunch of us here in Vancouver, but we are uh, spread to the four winds. So to get everyone in the same sort of virtual room and, and talking about the same thing uh, was A, a lot of fun. Uh, B, gave me uh, an immense feeling of pride to be part of it and C, learned so much about what people really want to try and do to improve uh, the way that they work and the way that they work with others. So yeah, we learned a lot there and we're going to do those after every release uh, and keep getting better at everything. Yeah, for sure. And like, I, I think at some point we determined that we're spread across like 14 or 16 different time zones. So like get, yeah. getting a company wide meeting together is a big challenge, especially like we have people that are contractors or part time. And like you, you got to find a way to get like the entire world into one chat room. And it's always kind of one of the fun techniques that uh, any business like you're talking about Scrum and Agile in different places, like, you know, having been through Amazon, having been through independent game studios, like there is no good answer and everybody struggles with voice com <laughs> like, like yeah. hangouts everything it's like there's always those weird little things that uh just you know they exist in 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 the world that uh no matter what you do uh so yeah there's a lot of stuff that you can kind of carry over from other places into game development which is something that like having started as a modder yourself um you know like the whole team has this modding thing and like everybody has kind of come to game development through different paths of just pure interest and love in the games so like it's it's it, it shows in squad in my opinion hopefully you guys are seeing that and to kind of segue into more directly talking about squad um you know these changes you're making like what do you see as like say the next year of squad like what changes are you bringing to the table to make squad function you know like the the game it should be um it's uh like there isn't a big single change uh really it, it is we are a team that is um going through this process as a group for the first time in in many uh, many respects so uh the changes will be just to uh help people through the process of, of shipping the game and uh making sure that um we've done everything we can to make it the best game it can be and then uh look at what's next and make sure that we learn everything that we can good and bad from squad to uh the next project which uh will be even better because we'll have learned all of those things 
um, I think I'd like to try to get those uh, kind of real-time conversations going more frequently. The retrospectives will be part of that. Um, but there are other uh, agile rituals. And yes, I did just do air quotes, sorry. And there are other um, things that we can do as a team to uh, make sure that we all know what, what each other's strengths and weaknesses are and support each other. And uh, that kind of, that's, that's a, a function of uh, building a strong studio culture, uh, which already exists right now. The, the culture here is uh, something that I got uh, happily caught up in very quickly. And, uh, you know, it, it's nice to have uh, colleagues that you also feel like you want to hang out with as well. You know, it, it's like getting a whole new, a uh, group of friends, which uh, I like having lots of friends. So. Oh yeah, for sure. Like, you know, being outside the city of myself, I'm, I'm in Seattle, the main office is in Vancouver. Uh, we periodically get pictures of people having group dinners and stuff. And it, it really does come across like people are just hanging out like a family. And that is one thing that, you know, I'd like to brag about in terms of OWI is like, a lot of people say they're family, but how many studios are actually like, when they're done working for the day, they go home, have a couple beers together, and then maybe start on a mod together. Like, yeah, that's pretty freaking rare. Like, that's that's a cool thing we have going, and I, you know, it, definitely something that we try to preserve, and like that's kind of like the core of who we are. Um, for sure, I, for me, it's really re-energized my interest in uh, modding and uh, get making games as a hobby as well. You know, for a couple of years, uh, I uh, I put the toolkit down. Uh, a lot of stuff changed as I was working in much more uh, complex roles and on bigger games that didn't really, um, you know, have that modding ideal about them. Uh, and also, I I did my own sort of family modding and and created my own little mods, uh, little little mini mods, <laughs> two of them. So uh, they they took up quite a lot of my time, uh, and now they're slightly bigger mods. They're uh, um, going to make their own mods one day. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it's fascinating to kind of watch, like, each each little step in iterative, even if it's just your first mod, like, we have seen so many of those things that our team has done that end up in the game, like, six months later when they discover a new palette or a new technique or a new material brush or something like that. So, like, it, it you know, just, even if you're just doing it for fun, you never know what's going to come out of it. Uh, which is really cool. Uh, and kind of like speaking to that, like uh, we've had a, you, I want to tie back to what you had talked on. Like we're, you're not talking about making that many changes to squad. You're talking about kind of bringing squad to fruition and, and bringing it what, you know, what it should be, what, what the game is. Uh, yeah. People are curious. There's a lot of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. There's uh, a lot of stuff that works really, really well right now that um, just needs to be polished to be uh, the, to realize its potential. And there are other areas that we need to um, pay more attention to and uh, address things that aren't quite right yet. But th those are all totally fine things to have on a game that isn't finished yet. Uh, and we have the team with the capabilities to do that now. Uh, and it's it's going to be great. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. And like one of the main things that people get really concerned about, or at least have, you know, like consistently express some concern about is kind of where squad fills, falls on the military simulator versus arcade spectrum. And as somebody that's really literally worked on both like the serious Sam aspect of that and the more technical side, like I, I'm curious what your insight into that is and how you see squad kind of forming into that role. Like where are you on the spectrum or where do you want to see, you know, like how, how do you feel about the Milsim versus arcade? Knowing that both are totally fine practices. There is nothing wrong with playing a game either way. Uh, well, personally, I would go somewhat arcade-y, but um, like the, I think you can go so arcade-y that things like... Um, cooperative play, communication, strategization become trivialized. Uh, I and I don't want to see that happen. It is, for me, one of my two favorite things about Squad is, is that cooperative strategy play. It, it's really a unique thing that I don't think I've seen another game do as well as Squad does it. So um, I think to, you know, to simplify it into more simmy versus more arcadey, the the focus will be on keeping things fun, but trying to uh, instill as much realism as we can, because that realism is what gives us our really unique immersion that we have in the game. When when you're playing and 
you're kind of you know you're charging down a hill and you can hear your squad mates behind you charging as well and there's lots of artillery fire shooting over your head and you can hear comms ringing out and people saying medic and all <laughs> and there's a tank coming up the hill and you're like oh shit. Uh, no swearing uh but yeah the um that immersion i think is the is a thing to be preserved at all costs so any time that we're making a decision on game balance related to being more realistic or more arcadey uh that needs to be preserved but uh we also want to make sure that the game doesn't feel unnecessarily punishing uh so anything that that just is not fun and uh has no real place in 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 the game other than it's this is this is what happens in real life so this is how we should do it uh but it's really no fun and adds no value to the actual gameplay mechanics those those are things that we would probably shy away from um and have done already i think a little bit that and i think that there's an important thing to remember with all of this stuff it, that because we are from this modding background and because um you know the reason people start mods is because they see the potential to do something else if there is something in squad that uh a, a group of people feel passionate enough that they want to change then you know you, you guys should mod it and and make something cool of your own and, and be proud of it as like we are with squad itself um we're, we're going to continue to make uh the modding tools that uh exist uh, as accessible as they can be so that uh, your creativity is uh, not bounded by complexity of, of weird tools that no one knows how to use. <laughs> yeah, and that's kind of a core strategy. Like, we don't necessarily talk about, speaking of core, we don't necessarily talk about it so much, but, like, we are building technology that other people can use, and that is some of the intent behind, like, what comes out of Squad is to help, you know, build a framework that other people can mod with, and, and like, we want to support that. We want to make it easier for people to actually get into games build cool stuff and like one of the nice things about the unreal engine is you can actually just purchase assets right from the store use them in your game spin up a mod plunk them in a squad map see how that plays that's a really cool thing like that's uh you know it's not something everybody can do but it's something that everybody can learn to do and like that's absolutely like i just noticed that in the uh in the stream chat there uh, not everybody can mod lol from lorry um if you can't mod and you'd like to give it a try honestly you might surprise yourself with uh, what you're capable of. The tools are pretty great these days. Yeah, uh, YouTube tutorials for Unreal are also really good. Like they have a whole series of uh, educational videos that are easy to follow. And like, you know, even I have been able to get in and mess around with Sequencer and kind of get some screenshots out of it. And that's a good place to start, in my opinion. If you just want to go in and open up some squad assets and, and pose people around, take pictures, see what kind of makes a map go, it's really cool. Like that's it's it's simple. You don't have to have any productivity out of it. You can just kind of hang out and, and check out what's what's going on in the squad and get a little bit understanding of how that works. Yeah, I really would under like encourage anyone who thinks that they can't mod uh, to give it a try or like join the the squad uh, modding community and talk about ideas that you might have and. You know, this is a really supportive community who who wants to help each other because eventually, you might work together on something that you believe in as a group. So, it's it's a it's a fun hobby too. You know, I I, uh, I started it because I, I it was that or you know, hang out behind the bike shed sniffing glue. So I think I made the right choice. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, and now you can model glue, so it's all better. Uh, yeah, like that's the thing. A lot of people, current OWI devs have actually started their career as squad modding Discord. So, as, as Running Duck points out, there is a squad modding Discord. You should join that if you have questions about modding or doing anything like that. Uh, you know, Zach's in there. He is our primary modding developer. So, you know, you're going to get direct access to the SDK. If you have certain requests of things we can make to improve it, that often happens. Uh, and if you can't mod, like I mentioned earlier, there are feedback surveys. If you want to get us, you know, feedback, send us the, send us words, send us, get in Discord, talk to us, get on the forums. We're listening. We're starting to do more feedback surveys. This is the thing we definitely want to do. I mean, this is the thing that has started since Phil has been here. Uh, these go into the retrospectives. These are actually, you know, data that we're, we're trying to be more cognizant of, and we're trying to be sure that everybody gets a voice, and we want to make sure you're, you're continually heard. Um, the, the current survey out there, I think, is already about three times the response rate of the last one. So we're, we're really stoked with the response to that. So, you know, keep it coming. Um, you know, like we, we have some experimental effects uh, and this is part of or some experimental features. And this is kind of something that, uh, you know, we're, we're trying to encourage more. Like you see us developing things like buddy rallies and, and you know, the uh, re re 
respawn system and adding more vehicles. Like, these are still things that are experimental. We want your feedback. These are things that could go into mods later. They could stay in the vanilla game. And, you know, like, they're, they're features that we have that we're trying out. Uh, it kind of goes back to our modding heritage. We kind of want to see what happens when certain things happen in-game. And often the best way to do that is to test with you guys. So your feedback is super important. It really is. Yeah, like, thank you, everybody, who's responded to the surveys that we've put out so far. Uh, you genuinely are helping us shape the game. Uh, and that kind of feedback is so useful to us and so valuable. It, it's it's hard when, you know, you look at a game all day, every day, to see kind of the, the more macro view, uh, the, the, what the edge cases are, what's going on out there. Uh, I don't have a lot of time uh, to to spend playing the game as much as I would. I, I am planning to carve out more time for that. Uh, I'm very much a newbie when it comes to that. Uh, I was hoping to kind of just leap in and play a lot more at the beginning of uh, A13 when we put it out. But uh, yeah, it's busy times here right now. So that's not necessarily been the case. My My time in the game at the moment is usually spent looking at a specific thing and figuring out what the best way to uh, finish making it are. Uh, so, yeah, when okay. I've when I've gotten uh, more time, which I, I endeavour to do, so uh, I'll get some of that feedback myself uh, from my own experiences. But right now, I'm very much a squad newbie. So, if you do see me in game, be gentle with me, please. <laughs> <laughs> Have you found a role or vehicle that you find an affinity for yet? Uh, roles. Uh, I'm, you know, I am your classic healer uh, from any game I played. Uh, I was always a, a, a holy priest in uh, in World of Warcraft. So uh, not a face I, melter, huh? Not a, well. I did. I did my my fair share of face melting, but uh, it's uh, classic well, no. coming back up. You could be the uh, the void <laughs> priest you always meant to be. Uh, well, I'd probably go DPS. Frankly, I, I definitely would. Uh, uh, I, I had a pretty decent mage for a while, which, uh, well, I was very proud of it. Nobody else liked the amount of DPS I was putting out. So what can you do? <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's their problem. Uh, so like, uh, well, you, you know. it was my problem. They said L2P, obviously. So. <laughs> well, I, I would have joined you, even if you weren't a paladin. Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, yeah, to kind of bring it back to squad, uh, we had a question from Mati, I believe that is how it's pronounced. Uh, they're curious, how would you describe your role and responsibility as producer, especially in regards to game designers and creative art directors? Do you have the last word? Or are you more like a project manager? So I, I can have the last word if necessary. And uh, sometimes when a call needs to be made that is critical about uh, putting the game into the player's hands or delaying it, uh, that might be a call that I need to make. But otherwise, uh, I'm not an art director and I'm not a game, well, I am a frustrated game designer. So uh, they you know, they work at this, company they work at the studio because they are an expert in their field so i i'm it, it's my goal to just get the best out of those people and uh rely on their vision and experience and knowledge uh so it yeah i mean if you want to go one way or the other with it it's i suppose it's more like a project manager and uh but uh it's a bit of both, and it, and it depends on the team. It depends on the project. It depends on what point in the project you're at. Uh, lots and lots of uh, variables come into play, uh, but my uh, focus is always on um, helping my team get the best from themselves and each other and uh, really um, looking to make sure that that valuable experience, knowledge, passion and so on ends up being showcased in what we produce yeah i think that's another good point is just like there isn't anybody in owi that doesn't wear multiple hats like uh you know like even you know we, we have had people that were hired as mod mappers or modders that come on and start doing technical art or getting involved in qa so like everybody has that willingness to just kind of support and you know like it i don't know that there's ever been kind of a non-cooperative discussion where people come to a an agreement that way or so it, it is yeah like it's uh, it's very much Everybody around the company kind of has a little bit of a, a mixed role. And, and that's not to say that there aren't disagreements either. You know, we, we are, with passion comes anger. <laughs> so 
when things do get heated and there are disagreements, uh, it, it's, it's, uh, I see it as not necessarily counterproductive as long as there is passion and there is people trying to get their point across in, in a constructive way and not just calling each other, uh, names, then that's, there is some guidance to, to be put into those conversations sometimes, but for the most part, uh, they should, uh, play out, uh, and people will, uh, you know, arrive at the right conclusion. It, it's, it's, it's something that comes with any large group of people who work closely together. There, there are differing points of view and there will always be disagreements. And, uh, it, it's an important part of, uh, what ends up in the game. Yeah, for sure. Um, and kind of like, you know, we always kind of come back to like, is it going to be fun? Um, are there any like pillars in your mind for making decisions against? Like, say there's two good viewpoints, like how do we decide what what supports squad best? What are the pillars behind that? Yeah, I mean, uh, they are pretty much what we've been talking about. They, they are uh, having that uh, cooperative, strategic play uh, be as, as strong as it can be. I think it's already pretty strong, uh, but there are definitely opportunities to improve on it. Uh, so when we're talking about anything it, 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 um, or new features in the game or improving it on existing ones, how does it contribute to that uh, cooperative aspect of the game? How, how do we get that uh, as a, a factor in what we're putting together? The, um, the second part is the, the modding. Uh, you know, we, we are true to our roots as, as we can be. So uh, anything that we put together, we think about what other ways this might be used and how we might use it later. A, a lot of what we do that is uh, game balancing or testing out experimental features is really rooted in, in the, the same process that started off from, you know, Project Reality modding, really. It's, it's all um, us trying stuff out and seeing if it feels good to us and then letting a lot more people play it and see what happens when that then when we do that you know there's, there's a lot of testing and qa that we can do internally but there's a whole lot of stuff that really you can only find out about once a lot of people are playing it and uh it's one of the nice things about um early access is it allows us to get it in front of a larger audience uh before it's finished uh, and so we don't have the nasty surprises that some games have had well, in the last year, I can think of a few at least, um, where they've just put it out uh, without any of that. And, oh, look, it's broken. <laughs> so th those two are the pillars that I uh, I always gravitate towards. But beyond that, there is, of course, the, um, the military realism and uh, representing uh, cool real-world tech uh, in the game uh, in a way that people will recognize things that they're interested in and uh, like uh, interacting with. So uh, the, that realism, whilst I, you know, and I'm not going to go back on what I just, uh, I said earlier about realism versus arcade, there is very much a, a balance there, uh, but it's a conversation that we're always having and looking at what opportunities that we have to bring more realism to the game, to, to increase that level of immersion. Immersion, I think, is, is the word that we use more frequently than realism. Uh, you know, it's, it's largely thought that immersion is a, uh, a result that you get when the level of realism is very high. Uh, I don't think that's necessarily the case. I think uh, it's a, the difference between realism and the expectation of what should happen when you do something is uh like the the balance that is, is uh to be struck and that's something that our design team is very very skilled at so yeah that so there you go for the pillars that i'm i'm most frequently focused on would be the the modding and the cooperative play and the immersion slash realism aspects yeah, Sergeant Ross, uh, who's been a game designer and is currently the head of the customer experience, kind of my boss. If you don't know Sergeant Ross, you've probably not been too long, but we welcome you to get to know him. He's in the forums. He's in Reddit to come say hi. Um, his way of phrasing it, I think, is one of my favorites in that he says that uh, we're responsible for creating experiences. We're creating realistic experiences on the battlefield. And sometimes that does mean, like, 
bringing to what players expect to the game more than what's real. Like in in the simple terms, like there's a a good example is a grenade launcher. Everybody's kind of familiar with that under sound under barrel grenade launcher pop that it makes. That doesn't really happen. That's usually just kind of a a round going off. It makes sounds like a bullet. But there are things like that that like not necessarily you know, that explicitly in squad, but there are trade-offs like that, that you kind of, you know, the, the realism versus fun kind of thing. Like, it doesn't have to be milsim versus arcade, it can be just, like, what enhances the player experience in a way that makes them feel more like they're in the battle. Like, those are those are things to consider. So, like, it's it, there's a, it's it's not just a spectrum, it's kind of a, the the, uh, the graph where, you know, you get your four quadrants and kind of, kind of pick and choose where to balance on that. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, something that, uh, when I get the opportunity to talk to uh, squad players, uh, which uh, I haven't had a lot of opportunity to do that yet, but I guess I'm doing it right now. Uh, something that I always try to ask, uh, and maybe uh, you guys watching might want to like start a thread on this or something on the forums, uh, is uh, you know doing a comparison from squad to uh, other games that you've loved, but not doing it in the in the usual way of you know realism versus arcade and things like that but um look at it from the immersion and the cooperative point of view like what areas of immersion and cooperative play from other games that you've loved uh are not as well represented in squad or are represented better in squad than the other games or maybe you've got your own idea about something that that you're just like why has nobody done this yet uh maybe you could do it yourself or maybe we could do it for you <laughs> yeah, no, that's certainly a thing, and uh, we're always, you know, like, map points of interest can be crafted to create these sort of scenarios, or, you know, if there's something you think we're just not thinking about in terms of what you've had fun, and, you know, going back to Battlefield, like, I can think of some really amazing times I had storming Iwo Jima that just haven't really been recreated in, in, in many modern games. So yeah, if you if you ever have those moments where you're, you know, I, I like to refer to them as water cooler moments, where you're kind of sitting around telling, oh man, this amazing thing happened last night. Think about those. Tell us what you're thinking and let us know if we can help kind of create those in squad. That's that's sort of uh, a, a real goal. We want people to kind of walk away being like, oh man, I had the most fun last night. Like if we can do that, that's that's a good sign. For sure. Yeah. Like I, I have a very small list of like my greatest moments in gaming and, and the things that are most memorable that I've carried throughout my uh gaming hobby life uh and i i always uh think about those when when we're at a point where uh new stuff is being brought up so yeah i, I it's it's an experience that everybody here has and everybody watching has too so you know it, it's an important part of of your life and and how you spend your free time uh and why not uh, share it with others and uh you know, um, enjoy those uh, shared moments, but also think about what they might look like in a game that Offworld makes, or that you make with Offworld's tools. Or that you help craft through early access. <laughs> uh, kind of on that regard, I, I, Dwaggy has a question, um, more specifically directed, directed towards squad. Is there going to be damage for specific areas of helicopters, like tracks for tracked vehicles? Um, maybe. There, There is... Uh, there's a technical uh, concern when when we are adding complexity to uh, the physics model uh, of a, a moving object. Uh, that sort of uh, um, localized damage is something that we have already, as you know, in other vehicles. Um, there is also uh, the uh, licensing aspect where we are um, portraying somebody's uh intellectual property in our game and uh sometimes they don't want to see their precious property being uh destroyed in in unusual ways all right in uh, the same way that we wouldn't want to see somebody destroying copies of squad or something <laughs> just... right and uh i did uh, uh earlier in my career i worked on a game called project cars and i spent some time working with the various uh car manufacturers uh licensing their vehicles to go into the game uh, and some of them had some very specific rules and riders about what they didn't did and did not want to see their cars doing uh, and actually that i think that generally the auto industry is uh, softened a bit when it comes to that uh, but uh, years ago when i first started 
working on those types of games. They didn't want to see the cars crash at all. They, they wanted no damage on their cars whatsoever. They didn't want to see the cars roll and things like that. So like, if you think back to earlier racing games and you think, why, why can't I get, like, I just hit that other car and it should have done something and it didn't happen. Probably not a technical issue. It's probably because the, uh, the manufacturers didn't want that to happen. So those are conversations that happen still to this day. And when we talk to uh, the manufacturers of vehicles and, uh, you know, we're talking to helicopter manufacturers at the moment, uh, th there are some uh, things that we need to do to satisfy their concerns around that. Uh, from a technical aspect, uh, we want to make sure that the game uh, runs fast and is performant in in all instances. And if uh, having a lot of uh, localized damage to helicopters would detrimentally affect that, we'd look at ways that we can do it uh, whilst uh, reducing the performance impact. And if, if it's just going to be something that we, we aren't able to mitigate, then we, we might have to make a hard call on that. But I, I, I want to see helicopters that have parts that you can blow off too. So uh, the, the, um, the intent is there. Uh, we'll just wait and see what we end up with. Uh, and uh, we will, when, when helicopters uh, do arrive in the game, we really want to hear how you all feel about them. Yeah, and that's kind of one of the trickiest things about we're working with an engine that is constantly upgrading. As everybody knows, A13 just kind of went through a huge engine upgrade to 4.21, and like that brought all sorts of new tools and toys and performance, like perf performance upgrades and things like that, that like we're going to be continuing working with those for months to make sure that we can get more into the game. So the, the more we can optimize, the more we can cram in, like, you know, like helicopter components and things like that. But yeah, I think certainly all of us would at least like to see, you know, a damageable tail rotor where you can put it into a spin or something or oh. yeah, like those, those are things that, yeah, we very much want to see in squad too. I think all of us have uh, memories of taking down, you know, black Hawks and like mash tar city with rocket launchers and watching them kind of spiral out of control. And yeah, yeah, like, exactly. These, these are the moments that we're talking about that like there's really fascinating things that happen in games that we all love to see. Like that's, that's what we want to hear from you. Yeah. Those, those create those really, exciting moments like going back to what i just said about the 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 memorable moments that you take with you something like that uh where you you clinch victory from defeat by smashing a helicopter down on your opponents or something like that <laughs> um yeah as long as the licenses don't mind us doing that <laughs> right yeah that, that is the tricky part but yeah even if they don't we'll probably find some creative ways to make some cool stuff happen in Absolutely. game so Absolutely. rest assured if, if, if nothing else you're still going to be able to blow some stuff out of the sky just fine yeah. uh, speaking of the jail poppin has a question are there any marksmen on the owi staff um i don't know if we have certified marksmen in in the like designated squad marksman role we do have people from various militaries around the world from marine mortarmen or, you know we have people that we consult for russian uh, armor we have people that have served in the swedish forces we have people that have served in austria like so we have a team that has military focus uh, kind of across the world like if there's if there's hardware that exists in the world today somebody on the team has probably used it i don't know that we've had anybody specialized in, in marksmanship uh that said there are some really good shooters on the team and i would not challenge them in uh in a there, there is uh, a collection of, of uh very scary looking uh, uh replica firearms in the office that invariably a couple of people are walking around the office with at any point sometimes that's uh merlin doing that and uh, that can be slightly intimidating <laughs> uh, there's quite a few people who are definitely nerf marksmen so uh that that's something I, i'm you know i would normally be guarding the back of my head for from nerf darts but right now i have green screens behind me so uh, i'm protected i might just keep these up for the rest of the day actually yeah just tell everybody <laughs> that it's a really long stream and it's business critical so you don't take around uh yeah that's another thing the team is really like where they can't own firearms the team is really into working with uh, airsoft and paintball so like there's a lot of replicas out there there's a lot of people working with uh, teams and doing the whole tactical movement thing people are just really into what they do here like it's it's kind of a thing that you know yeah, that, that it's in the life, but people are here because they're interested in what they do. So it, hopefully that kind of translates out. Yeah, and I'm pretty mean with uh, a dartboard. That's my that's my main claim to fame on marksmanship. Give me a a, a challenge to do a triple twenty. I'll 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 get there. <laughs> I find I can do that if I ride the bomber curve perfectly, but otherwise I'm terrible at darts. So.
<laughs> I'm much better after I've had a drink or two. <laughs> uh, Spaceman Spaghetti wants to know that his, his dog has been eating a lot of grass lately. Um, you should probably consult okay. a vet, but they probably have some tummy troubles, big guy. You should, you should they, they're going to poop it out. It's going to be okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm, not a de I'm not a vet, by the way. Just make sure they're not eating any mushrooms or something. Don't take medical advice from the internet. Uh, <laughs> uh, and something a little bit more in our warehouse, uh, Lux99MC is curious. Uh, does helicopters, do helicopters mean we'll have AA shoulder-mounted weapons? Uh, I... It might be too early to say. There, there, are, <laughs> yes. there are things going into squad we're not ready to talk about yet. That could be one of them. Yeah. Uh, we obviously have the ZU-23 in there right now already. And we're not going to leave you defenseless. We'll, we'll put it that way. I, I think there, there is an important uh, aspect of game balance that we are already considering where there are, there are going to be aircraft in the game, so ground forces need uh, a response to those. Uh, and what that is, is currently in process. Yep, and, and that's actually kind of an interesting point. Like, uh, can, can you maybe touch on what our plans are to get squad out of Alpha and like what that means? What, what, what's next after Alpha? What's next after we get 100 you know, players, helicopters, and everything? Um, so we've got a, we've got a, a few uh, hard um, releases coming uh, with some big features in them uh, between now and us entering beta. Uh, when we uh, have all those features in and they are uh, stable to the point that we're satisfied and we feel like the uh, you, the community, are satisfied, then that's the point that we'll enter beta and really drill down on uh, getting all of the bugs ironed out in the game. Uh, that process can be lengthy, but I think because we have such a uh, passionate and vocal community, I think we'll we'll together work through getting that stuff done. And also we have an amazing QA team, by the way, sorry, Carl. And uh, that is, uh, you know, that, that is what we're slowly inching towards right now. Uh, and uh, what comes after that then is 1.0 of squad. And that uh, will have a culmination of five years work. Uh, all, all rolled up in one beautiful package. And uh, at that point, there is going to be some stuff on the cutting room floor that we'll have some conversations about what happens next. Right now, we aren't making too many uh, decisions on what happens after 1.0, but you know, we, we have to look to the future. And we're excited to do more things, uh, more things in new games, uh, more things with squad. So yeah, let's see what happens. Yeah, and just to kind of supplement that, the, the community team, we have quite a few plans coming up for Squad, at least, you know, already planning out through the rest of the year, uh, events, charity events, things like that. We, you know, we've got some other surprises in the pipeline. So be on the lookout for those. Like, we're, we're not going anywhere. Squad's going to be around for a long, long time, and we plan on being there for it. Uh, my face will probably be yeah. here for some quite some time, too, so get used to that. Uh, beard might It'll get longer, we'll face. see. <laughs> uh, Lori 7 by 3 is curious, uh, any words on Commander? Commander is a word. That's right. It's true. It's a good. It's a good word. It's a strong word. <laughs> it is a good. Yep. Commander is uh, coming in a release soon. I'm not quite ready to uh, be more committal to it than that, but I, I have seen it. It exists, and uh, uh, there is some really interesting stuff coming in with that that is currently in progress related to cool uh, military tech and interesting. Um, cooperative play options that it will bring so wait and see uh i i want to i can't wait to show it to you guys uh the team is really pumped to uh get it into your hands and uh it's it's an area that we're all very excited about to uh see what comes of it i can't help but notice at this point that everybody's seeing you talk from a commander feature too you are you are currently in the form <laughs> of a, a commander tool so uh, uh that yeah. was the easter egg so uh, yeah, if you uh, if you're curious about that, just just keep looking at the screen, start getting a feel for uh, for for Phil always watching you at all times. <laughs> there there has been some subliminal messaging popping up uh, on the drone throughout this feed, and uh, if you scroll back, you might find some hidden messages. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, that that's definitely a thing that's coming. Commander is coming. We'll talk more about that. And and commander features go back months and months and months and years now. 
uh, kind of the first thing we did implement was that tab map, which we refer to as the command map, which is a little bit different than the roaming map. Um, you're going to see more stuff there. You're going to see that continue to get used, and, and you start to see more distinguishing features between the two. So keep an eye on game. We have more coming. We have definite plans for that. We have some cool ideas we think you're going to like. I've definitely seen some of the effects that Bruno has been working on, and, and those are also awesome. Uh, speaking of, I do want to call out QA. Uh, QA has been just absolutely vital recently, especially uh, we've just released 13.1, and without those guys really cranking away on those crash bugs. And there were so many and so diverse in ways that were hard to track down that, yeah, the, those guys are definitely heroes. So they, uh, they deserve props for, for getting 3.1 out the door in such kind of a speedy manner and fixing those really nasty crash bugs. For sure. Yeah. And, you know, that's not going to be the end of those. That, our QA team is our first line of defense, and they are the reason that the game is as polished as it is at this point, which, you know, some people might debate isn't very but i i would disagree that a game that isn't finished to be as playable as it is right now is uh a real achievement um so and and it, it's going to just get better and better and that's only through the uh immense powers of our qa team yeah for sure and like they, they really are our first line of defense in making sure that we are we are meeting the the spirit of squad before it goes out the door and you know they are uh, it, it's actually been fun to watch a lot of them kind of develop as game designers and stuff too, where some of them have developed mods. And I, I think you're going to see like destruction kind of came out of the community modding team. So things like that were uh, not community team, but uh, the modding server has been kind of brought to team. So things like that, like there really are people that are testing and, and thinking and getting more involved in squad. And that's sort of how we like it. You know, we like, uh, we like pulling from that and, and the expertise there. Yeah, for sure. It's, you know, again, to, to reiterate and to labor my point a little bit, sorry, folks, this is this really unique group of people that we've uh, gathered together that, that's making um, some interesting decisions that uh, put, put squad uh, really uh, head, head and shoulders above a lot of other games, uh, not because it's got this you know massive financial muscle behind it, but because it's got this massive creative uh, force that, that, what, that has seen an opportunity to do something differently and to do it better. And if you can't do that, then I, I don't know. I wouldn't be in this industry if I couldn't do that. Yeah, and that's that's the secret behind a lot of the industry is people actually love it here, despite there's a lot of flaws, there's a lot of hard work, there's a lot of things to complain about, but uh, most of them do not exist in OWI, and we're all very grateful for that. Uh, we have a question from Friday fifty six fifty six. When will you guys settle on a final Unreal Engine build? Um, so like the the upgrade to four twenty one was uh, super painful, but uh, it it was you know uh, two years worth of Unreal changes being uh, integrated at once. Um, we will look at the upcoming uh, releases. I know, uh, I, I think a lot of people saw the 423 trailer at GDC, uh, and there's a lot of exciting stuff in there. We, we aren't currently looking at 423. We are doing some uh, 422 related investigations at the moment. Uh, those, I, I'm, I'm gonna hamstring myself by saying this, those ought to be uh, smoother <laughs> things to uh, upgrade to because there's fewer things that have changed, but uh, anyone who's spent any time on the Unreal forums knows that that's never the case. Every, every single uh, engine upgrade uh, is fundamentally uh, going to rip the rug right out from under you uh, in a really uh, unexpected way. So th there, there's a lot about what we want from those uh, upgrades in terms of new features that they add to the engine versus our desire to finish the game on time. So <laughs> um, th there's a balance there. Uh, I think right now we're solely focused on uh, things that will help us achieve the goals that are already planned and things that will address issues that are currently in the game. Um, but maybe something will come up that, that just makes a lot of sense. Um, we'll see what happens. Nothing's off the table right now. Yeah, for sure. Uh, we're getting pretty close to being locked in, but like we said that at 4.16 too, and that was uh, I think Alpha 9 or Alpha 8, somewhere. These things happen. It's a cost-benefit analysis. If we think we can get bigger gains out of something, then it's going to cost us. We're going to do that. But speaking of having the rug pulled out from under you in weird ways, uh, in fact, this last uh, update actually included fixes we submitted to the engine, to the Unreal Engine that were incorporated. 
That's because right. of the way they were incorporated, they defaulted to another setting, which caused all sorts of reversions in our code. So, like, we had to go back and actually redo our own fixes in some ways because, uh, like, you never know. Like, that's just every project is different. Every project has different needs. Everybody approaches their project in a different way. So those things absolutely do happen. And Unreal is a very, very, very big project. Uh, so there's, uh, you know, the, there's areas of the code that nobody is familiar with that will just come and uh, surprise attack you. And then you'll have to all of a sudden learn why um, uh, the code that's uh, for dimming the screen when the device is being charged is uh, affecting your frame rate, even though you're running on PC and not on a laptop. Uh, but yeah, that's a thing that I've seen before. <laughs> I have a couple questions about the BMPs and Challenger 2. Um, stay tuned. I, I think there might have been some information about that in the past, but we have some some more coming soon. Obviously, kind of keep an eye on recaps and stuff like that. We always kind of kind of keep up on progress updates and uh, follow the social feeds. We, you know, we like to share media. We like mid videos. We like movies. We like pictures. Uh, yeah. So you know, be on the lookout for for more vehicles. We have plans for vehicles weapons. Like we're we're not done building the game. There's still stuff coming. Don't worry. That's right. Uh, not just helicopters. <laughs> Uh, let's see what else we got here. Oh, are we ready to talk about what abilities UAVs will have? Or that might still be a little far out. That's uh, something Mori 7 by 7 is curious about. Uh, I can say the UAVs will have abilities. <laughs> that's good. There so, we go. That's that's rubbish, isn't it? Sorry, sorry, guys. Uh, no, yeah, like the, that's one of the things. Like, you know, like if we keep falling back on, like we are still in alpha. We're still adding things to the games, and like once we have yeah. all those things, like that's kind of the transition to beta. Is once you have all of these features in, you start looking at how to make them better, faster, speedier, work better, improve them. But you're not building out new systems so much. So that's sort of like yeah. the, you know the steps, like the in software development, you go from alpha beta to release, and that's 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 where we're we're aiming. So uh, a lot of those things will become a lot more clear. We're always going to have play tests, so you know be on lookout for the opportunity to join the squad testing app, be on the lookout, follow the blog. We're going to let you know. Uh, the same thing goes for uh, free weekends and sales like that, too. A couple people have asked if we're going to have a free weekend anytime soon. Um, it, as soon as we know when one is scheduled, we'll be sure to get that out to you as loudly and clearly as possible. We want you to be able to play with your friends. Uh, that's definitely a thing that uh, I look forward to. Um, and then hopefully you, you take some time to be a squad leader for leading up to that, so you have a little bit of uh, advanced readiness. Uh, uh, Phil, have you heard any feedback on engineers recently? Uh, there is some stuff that we got through the um, the surveys, and uh, we're doing some uh, analysis on that stuff right now. So I don't know what decisions are being made there yet, but um, yeah, the, the, it's it's been a, a, a popular topic. So uh, make of that what you will right now. <laughs> yep, yep, keep discussing. We want to hear. Uh, SDK progress. SDK is coming. You know, obviously we had a, a big update. Uh, we just kind of talked about how how thorough engine updates are. So there's some updating the SDK has to do for that. That's another yeah. thing. We'll have more words on you for soon. We absolutely want to get modding support back out there. We absolutely want to get modding 2.0 out, out yeah. there. Uh, there's going to be some great features in that, like in-game downloading, whitelisting, stuff to make it a lot easier to play games and and not have to to leave the game to get into a mod. So. Uh, if you've been a fan of Troopers, if you've been a fan of Squad Z, if you've been a fan of any of those amazing maps that get featured in the Wrench every week, things like that, hang in there. The, the you know uh, South Africa cores are coming. The French uh, Foreign Legion mod is out there. We have Finnish Defense Forces. There, there's so much out there to be looking forward to, and we really want to get all that back into game so you guys can really enjoy what these amazing you know people have been doing and spending a whole, a whole lot of time on. Yeah, totally. Um, yeah, we've hit about an hour, so is there anything else that I can, uh, you know, kind of pitch your way that you want to tell us about? Is there anything that you want to kind of summarize the, uh, the Squatch yet with, Phil? Uh, I, I would just uh, like to say that um, something else that attracts me to a game, especially an online game, is the community that's playing it. Uh, you know, there, there's a lot of talk uh, around the industry and around gaming forums about uh, toxicity and play and that kind of thing. And I, I think for the most part, I've seen uh, an incredibly supportive, uh, very um, like mature and uh, interested in, in helping one another kind of community uh, that plays squad. So uh, please keep, keep with that positive attitude. Uh, everyone playing together has the same goal to have a good time. So 
keep keep having that good time and be gentle with me when you see me in the in game. <laughs> Yeah, just be sure to give Phil a little love, whether he's on the ground or in the air next time you see him in-game. And yeah, uh, a big shout-out to our community. This is something that's very, very true. Uh, anytime we talk to new players, it's it's really about like what you guys are doing out there to welcome them. You're answering questions. You're treating people fairly and nicely. Keep it up. Like That's that's what's bringing more good players into the game. That's what makes squad leading easier. That's what gets you better leaders. It's uh, it's really you know respecting each other and being part of the community that you want to see grow. Uh, and we absolutely appreciate that, and we love hearing all your feedback. So keep it coming. Tell us what you want to see for the future of squad. Um, you know, we're, we're going to keep making it stronger, better, and, and more fun. And we really appreciate you coming out and supporting us today. Uh, a massive thank you to Phil for taking, you know, literally a huge chunk out of his day to, off of squad to, to talk about squad. Uh, this My is the first question. time I've, I've actually gotten to uh, pin Finn down and Finn Phil down and talk about his history. Uh, big fan of a lot of the games he's worked on as uh, I saw a lot of you kind of in chat were. So we're grateful to have him on the team and we're really looking to leveraging your experience to you know make squad what we know it all can be and, and we're, we're honored to have somebody that's as passionate about it as we are uh, on the team. I, I'm honored to be part of it, honestly. So awesome. Yeah. Thank you for coming, everybody. Uh, we'll see you out there. This will be archived on YouTube. Uh, we'll see you next time. Cheers, guys. See you. In